Hey guys, Ron here, and today I'm going to be creating randomly generated Pokemon. I'm going to use this online generator to give me a random uh, animal, and then a type combo. And I'm going to have to try my best to make a coherent and semi-realistic fake mon. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. So, of course these Pokemon won't be part of my Asone region, but you can always check out the other Asone canon Pokemon after this. So, let's go! This Jaguar doesn't count, that was there before. We're going to hit submit now, and I'm going to react either positively or negatively depending on what animal we get now if it's a pokemon if it's an animal that i've created at least two times i'm not gonna do it okay you ready let's go what the what's an advocate <sighs> i i hate when it's just some generic bird this is not like we're gonna learn about it i'm gonna research about it we're gonna find out what it is all about and that's gonna be the, ha the fun of it trying to create a pokemon that actually makes sense based on the pokemon that we have and the concept that we're gonna make so maybe the type that we get is makes sense please be flying let's go poison ice what a poison ice bird okay let's find out what the hell an avocet is all right i'm just gonna google it let's see what the hell an avocet is Okay, it is a waiter in the same avian family as the stilts. Alright, so, I mean, it's a long bird. I mean, do we have a bird with long legs? I mean, not that many. The whole point is that it just stays in the water with its long stilt-like legs. It just said Avocet, but showed a picture of the American Avocet. That means we have other options here in terms of coloration. I mean, Poison Ice. It's already white. It's not too far off in terms of color. And then the black, you see, we can turn that into purple or something for poison. But now, why would it ever be poison ice? So instead of standing in water, it's going to be standing in ice, which makes which is not you know too far off. That's not going to be hard. So we have to make an ice bird. Avocet is the pronunciation, by the way. It has a very sharp beak. That could be like a needle that injects poison. That's not a terrible idea. Now, yeah. Okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. So it pokes the ice with its needle-like sharp beak and injects some kind of poison that kills whatever prey it wants to eat. It's this po the poison is contained within the ice because of that. As I design the Pokemon, it could change and it could become something even better or worse, but most of the time it's better. We'll just go with the flow and this, this is going to be just a fun, no, not strict because I don't have to create anything that has to be awesome for my own region. We'll just see how it goes. It's definitely going to still look like a Pokemon. But I don't know how amazing of a concept it's gonna be because, you know, they're random. Hopefully the next Pokemon we get isn't as hard to uh, create. Let's go! I'm gonna start by, surprise surprise, making the shape of a bird. Just the foundation before adding the ice and poison attributes, long legs and a needle-like beak. Then the plumage on its head will look like it's covered in ice, and while making its beak curl up like an avocet would be uh, counterintuitive to the entire concept, I added some spikes to allude to its origin and to make it look tougher, making its feathers all frozen like icicles, and adding ice all over its feet since this Pokemon spends all day in freezing lakes. Adding more icicles and lines that reference the lines on a hypodermic needle. Honestly, this Pokemon could have been appropriate in my creating new Pokemon from Fear series. Adding lines on the legs to indicate that the toxins are stored throughout its body. Adding more spikes because the head looks bare. And finally, some patterns on the wings. I spend the majority of my remaining time adjusting the proportions. Now, white and blue is classic, but now the burble... Burble? The purple of the poison in its beak and legs will help it make this Pokemon be an entirely unique concept. And here is Avicet, the injecting Pokemon, an ice poison type Pokemon. Avicet wade in icy water with their long legs. They pierce the ice with their sharp beaks and inject poisons that knock out their prey. They're able to survive in the lowest of temperatures and live off the tiniest of creatures. When they believe a particularly harsh winter will be unfruitful, they will preserve themselves in ice and hibernate until spring. They're also immune to all poisons and most pathogens. The life span of these Pokemon are incredibly long as a result. Heat not only makes this Pokemon sluggish, but reduces the potency of its venom. They can shoot pressurized frozen poison like spears at long range, piercing their enemies and infecting them at the same time. Their body is too solid to fly, but they're quite fast on foot. Here's their shiny. It has the ability Snow Cloak and Refrigerate with the new hidden ability called Ice Feathers, which halves damage from physical moves. It also has a new Ice Poison dual type move called Frozen Shot. It does 80 damage and has a 10% chance of freezing or poisoning. 
Honestly, this Pokemon came out way better than I thought, and considering a zone has very few native ice types that aren't regional forms, this Pokemon has a slight chance of being in a, in a zone. Uh, it's, it's both pretty, imposing, and interesting. Not the first thing I think about given the typing, but I, I'm very confident in this video now. Okay, let's go! Let's get something good! Let's get something good, something interesting! Another bird! A yellow-eyed penguin. Birds look different from other bird species, but let's try to have a diversity of animals here, so let's not have another bird. Let's not have two birds or two insects or two felines, okay? You get it. Let's try to get something a little bit different. A Kodiak bear. I mean, it's a bear. We've had, we have bears. Did I make a bear once? I don't think so. I mean, we made a teddy bear. We made a ghost bear. This could be something completely different. Let's go. Let's find a type. A grass bear. That's not too crazy. Now the question is, is it going to be a first stage or a final stage? We can have a, we can do a final stage if we want to make something fierce, or we can do a first little, a, a cute little grass bear. It's literally, it's a brown bear, you know, it's, it's nothing crazy. It's Alaskan. Now, they kind of already look green in this picture, not gonna lie. But I mean, also, here's the thing. Grass bear, somebody's done it before. There's probably a bunch of grass fake grass bear fake mon. Um, but uh, hey, I'll just it's probably just gonna be a bear combined with grass. Nothing too different. It's already an animal that is around grass all the time. Uh, this is probably gonna look like a starter, honestly. An unevolved uh, grass bear. Let's go. We're starting off with the body of a, a teddy bear, I guess. Pretty much a cub, since I know for sure this won't be the fully evolved grass starter bear thing. I didn't want to make the most generic eyes, so originally its eyes were a bit droopy like a brown bear, but that, that's not it. it. It'll be happy. It's a struggle to not make it look creepy, but I'm sure it's fine by now. Changed the proportions and gave him some leaves growing out of its neck and head. At this point, I noticed the proportions and details were definitely too big for a pre-evolved Pokemon, so I knew from here on out that I was making a middle stage starter. To make it less innocent, it's a bit uh, aggressive looking. More grass and claws. And then more grass, because this thing isn't a baby anymore. We gotta prepare it for its final evolution. Then spending more time on the proportions and finally adding its lucky green colors. I love the burgundy eyes. Presenting the middle stage grass starter Pokemon. Clover from Clover, Bear, and Clobber, the Clover Pokemon. This Pokemon is more aggressive than its pre-evolved form, but incredibly skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat. It comes effortlessly, almost like good luck. Its leaves, in fact, are used as good luck charms in its native region. They live in cold locations, yet the vegetation that grows on them is always green and healthy. The more saturated the colors of its pelt, the luckier it is. While friendly, they will attack if they sense ill will. Clover is always helpful and adventurous. They only like to associate with trainers who are optimistic and daring. They love to take risks. If they're in immediate danger, they will instantly grow their neck foliage into a bush that protects their entire head, like a helmet. Here's their autumn shiny. They have the ability Overgrow with the hidden ability Guts. They learn a signature move, like many starters do, called Shrubberize, which boosts its defense and special defense, and increases the power of any grass move it uses immediately after. Honestly, I'm annoyed that I made such a natural looking grass starter that I can't even use. Perhaps I'll revisit this Pokemon if I make another region after a zone. I really like its colors. Okay, something not too obscure, but not too general. Let's go. A goat. Okay, we already made a, a goat in a zone. It's a legendary Pokemon. It's technically not a goat. It's an Ibex. It's a species of wild goat. It's literally a goat. So, it's a good thing we're going to skip this one. Let's go. Marsh Crocodile. Ugh. <laughs> you guys are about to see in a few weeks a crocodile Pokemon. So let me skip that one, honestly. A bearded lizard. Nice. Okay, I really want to do a bearded lizard. I haven't done a bearded, a bearded dragon, sorry. Because, I mean, they're from Australia and I'm focusing on Pokemon that uh, could possibly be in the Middle East. So, a bearded dragon is phenomenal. I've always wanted to make one. Let's see what type we get. Fire Psychic! That's not terrible! Because this thing is in, in the hot locations. Okay, okay. Bearded dragon. I have an idea. Let's make it like a wizard. A wizard and a dragon at the same time. Um, because he- they're literally bearded. That's because when the male ones look like this when they're, you know, doing that. So, fire type psychic bearded dragon that, like, creates magic fire. Let's go. 
Gonna begin by making a stance of some vague creature holding its arm towards the enemy like a wizard about to unleash a spell. Lizard mouth. Then the flat face of a bearded lizard along with its beard. I gave it a pointed spike on the head to look like the hood and uh, hat of a wizard, but uh, that may be redundant since its forehead pattern also alludes to uh, a magician hood. A circle for the lizard ear, and then basically an upright and stout lizard. I'm not trying to be anatomically correct since this is a Pokemon and its reptile aspects are already clear. Adjusting the proportions and finishing up the body before adding spikes on its sides like a bearded lizard and patterns that finish off its clothed look. It still didn't look like a fire type so I added literal fire patterns but it looks tacky. I thought these patterns would instead make it look like it was using a dirty dark magic and uh, it mimics its rocky environment. I changed the angle of the spike but considering it looks like a fin now, I will take it out in the final art. The colors make it look hot and mystical. It's a good representation of the bearded lizard's black beard. Behold! Beard Druid. The bearded Pokemon, a fire psychic type. These Pokemon live solitary lives in hot and dry places. When threatened, they inflate the fire sack on their neck. Their spikes alone are usually enough to deter its enemies, but when facing the most persistent of foes, they will let out a giant ball of fire from their mouths that will consume everything in its path. They're known for spitting fire of every hue. The color of its fire is determined by the mineral it places on its tongue before attacking. It is then able to manipulate the fire using telekinesis. It can even change the fire's form, usually turning it into a huge dragon made of fire that acts on its behalf. This dragon-shaped fire will not be extinguished until it consumes its target. Here's the shiny. Its abilities are Magician and Flash Fire with the hidden ability Drought. Their signature move, Fire Drake, has 140 base power and can never miss but will prevent it from using any more fire type moves until it's withdrawn. This Pokemon isn't in a zone for multiple reasons, but also because it isn't what I would make if given the opportunity to make a bearded dragon Pokemon without any type limitations. But I'm still grateful for randomly receiving the fire type with this particular animal, and I think I did a fine job combining the beard with the psychic typing by making it a magic user. Off to the next one. Sea Cow! Sea Cow! That's not bad! We do not have- I mean, we have Dugong. But that barely looks like a sea cow. The Siren are cur currently comprised two just- yeah, Dugongs are literally sea cows. But let's make more of a, you know, a, a sea cow -y sea cow, you know, one that doesn't look like a seal. So, let's try it out. What type would it be? Let's find out. Psychic. Okay, so it doesn't live in the water. It's a floating sea cow that floats around in the, in the sky, I guess, maybe in the starry night. They are si they are sirens. They were supposed they're believed to be like mermaids in the past. So they're gonna be these exotic uh, magical creatures. They're not too far off from elephants. They're very, very close, very related. Look at that! I love how they eat. This one wasn't too hard since manatees already float in the water, so it wasn't tough to translate it into a sea cow floating in the air. It's literally a sea cow who already have very few details, so they're easy to make look like Pokemon, who usually have less details than their real life counterparts. It's sleeping, conserving energy, and then a big flowing fin. This is the extra attribute that Pokemon designers add to make an ordinary animal look like a, a fantastical beast. It also alludes to these animals being mistaken for mermaids and literally being named after sirens, so an, a mermaid tail is appropriate. Now I'm gonna add stars in its uh, hollow celestial body. They naturally look like spots. This Pokemon will look like a constellation in the sky. The colors will make it look like a classic illustration in a children's book too. Something you'd think about before going to bed. I'm very proud of this sleepy cow. And quietly check out Manatee from Manatee, Mana, a magical life energy, and Native, since it seems like the kind of beast an indigenous tribe would tell stories of. It's a pure psychic type known as the Celestial Pokemon. Manatees live most of their lives in the air, sleeping in herds in their atmosphere. It's said that they absorb magnetic and cosmic energy with their fins. Their fins are constantly undulating, even in sleep, processing the energy they absorb and powering the tiny stars within Manatee. They are still conscious of everything around them and can manifest their dreams into visually uh, detailed auroras. Its body is actually ethereal. It can be felt but not touched. But the stars within it are material, and the dimmer they twinkle, the less energy it has. They will wake up if they have slept for a certain amount of time without expending any energy. Here's their shiny. They aren't always asleep, so instead of comatose, they have the abilities Magic Guard, Dazzling, and the hidden ability Contrary. Honestly, this is one of the prettiest Pokemon I've ever made. But it's not in a zone considering I already have tons of psychic types, and I'm soon going to be revealing a similar water-based psychic legendary. But again, it could totally be part of a future region. 
I simply didn't expect these randomly generated Pokemon to end up making sense. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to check out the previous art videos with the Pokemon that are actually in a zone. Consider becoming a patron or clicking the join button to get cool rewards like seeing videos days early and a huge discount on the t-shirts I made for you guys. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I will post the full art of these Pokemon and bye!